You're listening to the God Stories Radio Podcast with Mike, Fritz, Trish, and Tina. Listen to us live on the Mixler app. Also, be sure to follow us on iHeartRadio and you will never miss an episode. Welcome, everyone, to God Stories Radio. This is session 114. I'm Mike. I'm Fritz. And I'm Trish. Well, Fritz, how was your week? Mikey, I got to say, my wife's... <laughs> your wife? My, my wife. <laughs> wake. I really want a boat. That's what I want to do. That's <laughs> My wake has been pretty interesting this that. week. <laughs> my life has been pretty interesting this week. I have definitely... Not been without challenge, that's for sure. Mm. But, uh, you know, I'm always growing and going, and he's always teaching me things through everything. So I got to say, coming out the other side, better off. Better All right. off. How about y'all? I'm doing great. Yeah. Today is my, it's my other birthday. It's yeah. not my belly button birthday, but it's my drug and alcohol free birthday. I've been clean and sober now since February 16th, 1988. So that's 29 years. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. Set me free. That's worth celebrating right there. Indeed. Yes. Well, Lion. What's going on, Mikey? I'm getting some some words from him and some hope and encouragement that certain things that he's spoken to me the last eight or nine months has been push forward a little bit you're very fidgety tonight i must say yeah he's you sound fired up i know right? I he's fired all up. tense over there i'm fired up i just got out of work i'm i'm just i wanted to get here in time and not be late like i was last week and <laughs> we have a in studio guest this week too so we won't have the issue with the dropping call like last week we have more than a guest we have we have two actually we have two actually we have aj in the studio tonight from yeah. the raging tech show that means yeah, that uh, us, he's not going to be on Mixler because he's here. Yeah, well, he's on, he's on oh, Mixler. he's on Mixler. But he's live right. with us. He's, he's live with us in oh. the studio on Mixler. All right. I he's going to be handling the chat board tonight, you know, and he's going to be, uh, well, that's what he said. <laughs> he's looking at you. Yeah, like, I know. Really? He's giving me the face. I know you were putting like, me to work. putting me to work. Sheesh. <laughs> uh, that's what I happens. I got some uh, shout outs if you guys want to. Absolutely. Let's hear it, Trish. We got some Facebook likes from uh, Randall Bernard. Thanks Thank you, Randall. Us. Also, our former guest, Andrew Columbia, is now a Facebook like. Oh, thank you, Andrew. And also, Laura Davidson. That's Arnie's, That's Arnie's wife. Arnie's wife. Oh. Yes. Well, thanks for Freedom. Listening. Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Laura. And then the regions, we have Maryland, which is my hometown. So that could be family, Town, maybe? state. State. All right. <laughs> And Pennsylvania, which is where my husband's from, so I don't know. That's probably just coincidence. And New York. So thanks for listening in Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New York. And then this is new this week. We have some iHeartRadio followers. We have Rackman Christian Radio. All right. And Linda F. Williams, MSW. We could always use some social work, right? And Alan Gravius. I think. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. For, thank you for following us on iHeart. Anybody out there that's listening and you're listening on iHeart, please follow us. Yes, yeah. and I want to thank Andrew Jones, uh, our guest a couple of weeks back that sent us the books. Yes, yes. the books. I'm about halfway through his mother's book, which um, has been amazing. Amazing book. And I just received a new book, uh, A Day on the Farm, which is uh, Al- Allison and... Um, She's going to be with us. She'll be a guest coming up here shortly. She will be a guest coming shortly. So we're reading her book. And then you have a book that was sent in. I do? Yes, you do. You took it off my... Oh, I did. Welcome to the show, Mike. 
It's good to have you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> oh, man, I also want to uh, thank um, our Freedom Radio Network listeners. I mean, we have two countries, Great Britain, who's in the lead, and Nigeria. Wow. And they are logging some hours on the Freedom Radio Network. I, I swear, I think a couple of people, they listen during work or something. <laughs> they are logging lot. hours. It's amazing to see the That's cool awesome. amount of countries that are listening to Mikey, 24 hours a day. Oh, and we boy. just want to send hope, comfort, and encouragement. That's right. All right, enough jibber-jabber. Enough jibber-jabber. Okay, so a couple weeks ago, I went to a conference called One Thing. One Thing. And it was um, sponsored by the Orlando House of Prayer. It was very awesome. They gave me a press pass, so it was one of the first times that I used a press pass. And they gave you a microphone, too. They gave me a (laughs) microphone. That's frightening, right? (laughs) So I actually shared there about some uh, prophecy that was shared with me. And then we'll talk about that later because I want to get him in as a guest. Okay. But um, I mentioned that we do God Stories Radio. We're in 50, is it 53 or 50, Four. 54 countries? And we want to spread the Christian testimonies. And so this gentleman came up to me afterwards and thanked me for sharing and prayed with me because my hand was still injured. And um, he decided he would come in tonight and give his testimony. So without further ado, I'll give you guys Jose Algren. Jose, hey, welcome Jose, to the thank show. You for How you guys doing? Hey, thank you man, guys thanks for, for coming me. in. We appreciate it. Not everybody says yes. yes. We <laughs> ask a lot of people, and we thank you for your time. Oh, but thank you guys for having me. Yes. Mm-hmm. The Lord sets them up. Amen. You know it. You know, we, as Mikey always says, there's someone or someone's out there that need to hear what you have to say, my friend. Amen. So take it away. Uh, all right. Well, I just want to thank God, you know, because the way he works, he's... um. He's awesome, you know. Um, I I didn't always believe that, you know. I used to um, uh, when I was four years old, my parents died of AIDS, of HIV AIDS, and when I was when I was born, um, the doctors hooked me up, and they thought, you know, I was supposed to have this disease, and you know, it was just all types of mess going on. And at the time, you know, I'm young, I don't I don't know what's happening, but um. They they kind of like shipped me with my aunt, my mother's sister, you know, and from there, uh, man, it, it was just a lot of trial, uh, physically and 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 mental abuse as far as um, uh, she had children of her own, you know, so I could understand now. Praise God that that relationship is mend mended, you know, because yeah. he's awesome. But at the time, I, I it was just a horrible experience. Um, you know, being a seventeen year old high school kid who couldn't get a haircut. You know, and people are making fun of him and and, you know, you have your cousin who's there and they're dressed up well, got haircuts and you got people asking you questions like what's going on. And, you know, you're dealing with all that inside. So it kind of grew a lot of anger and bitterness in my heart. You know, I was I was raised as a uh, we were raised in a Catholic church, you know, but we would go only on special occasions, you know, Mm -hmm. like Easter visitors. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Exactly. That was it. That was it. And um, so I never really, I, it just was kind of like uh, religious. To me, I used to think it was just fake, you know. Um, and so one day uh, I was 17 and I just decided, I was still in high school, I was about to graduate. And I just ran away. I couldn't do it no more. Um, I couldn't stay in that house no more. Um, so I just left, uh, not knowing what was going to be next, you know. And, um, I, uh, you know, I found out that um, the Social Security was uh, providing income for me at the time, you know, I, because they, my parents had passed mm-hmm. away. But I had no clue of that because the way I was raised, it was horrible. I never saw anything, you know. Um, but I just made it seem like, oh, yeah, I received that last check in Texas. You know, that's where I was at. I was in Dallas. In Texas, when you're 17, you're like a legal, you know, you're legal. And la- not age, 18, of right. age. Yeah. Right. So... I was like, yeah, can you just send this check to a new place? You know, um, you know, I didn't say anything to them, but that even broke me down more. I'm like, I can't can't believe can't believe this, you know. So um, right after that, I just went straight into um, man, just I went deep into drugs. Uh, I'm talking about I did uh, heroin, I did crack, I did cocaine. Um, I smoked a lot of weed, smoked a lot of cigarettes. I ha- I-, I was going around with different women i mean every weekend i was just i was just going crazy trying to fill a a a hole in my heart that i didn't really understand what was going on i was just trying to fill it with everything else but god 
Um, I never wanted to hear about God. I never wanted to hear anything about him. I, I would always say if there's if there's a God and he was so loving, then why would my parents die at this age? Why would I have to go through all this stuff? And why was all this stuff taken away from me? You know, uh, it was always about me, myself, and I, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all that stuff, you know. And um, I joined the Army when I was 19. So two years after that, you know, I joined the, I joined the Army, and I had all that junk inside my heart. And then in the Army... They don't care what you've been through. They're gonna mm-hmm. they're gonna transform you to be a soldier, regardless of your situation, you know. So, so I was there and I and I started, you know, I just I just did it, you know. I, I went through boot camp and you know did my my army career there. But um, it was uh, when I got to my 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 duty station. It was in Hawaii, and at the time, not a lot of people get chosen to go to Hawaii. I think there was only three of us in the whole like. 400 500 people that were there in 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 ait uh that were sent to hawaii so so i'm like all right cool you know i'm going to hawaii man you know <laughs> and uh <laughs> I, I, that's yeah. really hard to take <laughs> yeah man i was like okay let's do this so, although i'm sure it's not all that you anticipated once oh, you no. get there because oh, you're in the military not. still <laughs> oh yeah it was it was it was even more of what i didn't expect it was mm. more pt more um more trainings, more just all types of, you just got to be where they want you to be and do what they want you to do. And you really can't say anything about it. You're their property. That's right. So, um, in, in, in those months that I was there, I met, I met a girl, which was my wife. She's my wife now. Um, and I pursued her for about six months. She would never talk to me. You know, she would just ignore my calls, ignore me, no response, but I would always write her. And long story short, you know, um, we finally got on a date and, um, after three months, we got married, and wow. and I married her on the day that my mother passed away. And mm-hmm. at the time, I didn't know that that was the date that my mom passed away. You know, um, the way God works is is beautiful because, um, you know, I just we kind of did it because her parents didn't want us to be together and stuff like that. And um, you know, I could understand. They're seeing a, a guy who's tattooed up. He's in the army. He's he's in their island. Like you know, Hawaiians they're they're really territorial. You know. And so I had to like you know fight my way in the family, but like an um, Italian family. <laughs> yeah, man, it, it was intense. Welcome to the family. <laughs> yeah, but I loved them so much. Um, so you know I had a lot of baggage, but God is good because right after I got married, um, this is gonna. I, I if you're a Christian and you're listening to this, I hopefully this part challenges you because um, the man who took me to to he kind of like told me like you're coming with me to church, you know. He was in the army with me. He was battling homosexuality at the time, but he knew Christ, you know, and he was he was in his sin, but he was battling. And he's like, I need to bring you to church. And I'm like, dude, no, you know, well, I went with him. And so when I go into the church, um, I mean, it's packed out and I'm like, these people are nuts. Why am I in here? You know, this is all fake. You know, like that was my mentality at the time. Um, And I just went to the dead back. I was in the way back of the church. And, you know, they were worshiping and stuff, and I'm just there. And I don't know what happened, but I was like, you know, I guess it was all that hurt and stuff that I was feeling that I was like, you know, I did kind of like a whisper prayer, you know. And God didn't even let me finish it because he got me. <laughs> um, I, I, I said, uh, I said, God, if you're real, you know, you have the pastor pray over me. And even before I said that, finish it, the head pastor had came and found me somehow, some way. And had his, put his hand on my heart with two other elders, you know, and they started telling me the gospel. And at that time, you know, I now I understand what was happening. But at that time, I, I couldn't understand it because it was the power of God that hit me. But I didn't realize that I was on the floor because what I was seeing in my with my eyes closed, I, I was seeing a super bright, bright, bright light um, that I can't explain. And um, I felt like when your feet fall asleep, you know, that tingling feeling mm-hmm. that it was, warmth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, but it was beautiful, you know, it wasn't irritating and it was like electricity and I felt it all over me, uh, all over my body. And I didn't know what was happening to me, but it was, it was a beautiful feeling. I couldn't explain it. And the Holy spirit just came, you know? And after that, man, I just started like the next, literally the next day I, I went into, I need to find out more about God. I need to find out about more about Jesus. Who is this Jesus? Who is, what what just touched me like this? I've mm-hmm. never felt this before. 
And um, I went to deep praying and fasting right away. I went and I, I would lock myself in the closet. I would wake up at four in the morning, go pray, talk to him, um, read my word. And I was getting filled, you know, and he was showing me a lot of spiritual stuff um, as far as demonic, uh, uh, demon possessed people were manifesting themselves and 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 stuff was happening so fast, you know, and and it got to a point where it, it started becoming religious to me where I would go to church three to four times a week, and it started to become a routine. So that relationship that, that I thought I was having with him, it started to kind of like separate because I started feeling like I needed to go back to the world and, and start smoking again, which it ended up happening. I mm-hmm. ended up leaving, and this was in my first year as a Christian. And um, what happened after that, I tell you, man, you give the enemy a, a, a little crack, he'll take the whole door the foothold. And, and he will come in and he came in hard. Um, my marriage was uh, on the brink of divorce two times, uh, divorce papers in hand. Uh, my wife was going to turn him in into the courthouse. And, and my wife told me as she was uh, turning in those papers that she heard God tell her, no, I, the Lord, hate divorce, you know. And in her mind, she knew that the Bible says, you know, adultery, you know, you can leave, you know, because adultery was committed on both sides, you know. And it was a really hard thing to to go through. And it seemed like it was not going to be, like, restored. It seemed like it was done. But the crazy thing about it is that I would always go and pray, and so would she. And we were separated for about six months, you know. We were not even talking, you know. And I was doing me, and she was doing her and at and, and in all of that, I would always pray and I would come boldly. That was that was the scripture that would always stay in my heart. Come boldly before the throne of grace mm-hmm. to receive mercy and help in time of need. I would always come up to him, even in me being high. Even me being high, I would go to my closet. I'll be like, Lord, help me, Lord. I want to be free, God. I want to serve you. I want to be a pastor. I want to tell people about you, Father. I need your help to strengthen me to overcome this because I can't do it. I can't help this marriage. I can't help my lust, my, my, my fornication. I can't, Lord, but I need you to help me. I trust you because you say, come boldly before your throne. So here I am, and I trust in your blood. And this was my prayer constantly with God. You know, I will always come up to him. And he did it. Uh, uh, he, the way he worked it was, I don't know, he, his grace, he had his hand there. You know how he works, but... um. You know, I went up to my wife and I told her, listen, if we're going to get back together, I got to let you know what I've done. I can't get to you and just hide these things and have this in my heart. This is what I've done. You know, this is what I've done. And if you're willing to accept this and forgive me, then let's go on with this marriage because I don't want to lose this marriage, you know. But I don't want to come into this marriage and lie to you and tell you that I haven't done anything wrong or I haven't committed adultery because I have. And it weighed hard. It weighed heavy on my heart, you know. And God is good because she did forgive me. And then she told me her half, you know, and I forgave her. You both confessed your we sins. We both confessed our sins to each other. And today we have seven years married in April. We'll make seven wow. years married. Oh, after, that's fantastic. Yeah, after three months of, you know, just knowing each other and all that stuff. Um, but I, I want to say that now I have, you know, seven years in Christ. And um, my goodness, I couldn't believe what God would be doing with me today, you know, like, um, my heart is evangelism. My heart is for people to know the father's heart. My heart is to know that God loves you no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard you think that, or how far you think that you've gone, that there it's never too late because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus sets us free guys, Amen. whoever, whoever is listening to this. And if you're dealing and you're dealing with something and you're struggling Know that God always has a plan and he always has a purpose for you. And what the enemy wants to do for your wrong, God will always turn it around and use it for his glory because I'm living proof of it. Um, I go out on the streets a lot, you know, and I, I and I go pray for anybody everywhere, you know, even in Walmarts, wherever I have to go. Tell them, too, about Orlando House of Prayer and the idea behind it is that you can go they said if Walmart is open 24 hours a day, That's right. why is there not a church open 24 hours That's a day right. where we can go and we can commune with God and we That's can right. pray? When we need prayers. Yes. And so that's the solution and the answer to it is the Orlando House of Prayer. That's right. They're open 24 hours a day. And then there's multiple um, international. Is it the International House of Prayer that's open in different states and different areas? So if you ever need or in need of prayer, 
look up International House of Prayer and see if there's a 24 hour. I know there's several in oh, Florida. Yeah. yeah. And um, you're from the one in Orlando. In Orlando, yep. Yeah. And and so now I'll take it to that part of the story. Um, you know, I was in that in that in that part where I was like, I was going back and forth, and then finally I was like, Lord, you you have me. I'm here, right? And and I get a text message um, from what from the same guy <laughs> that took me to Christ in the army from the military, and we hadn't had talk for like four years, man. We hadn't had spoken, and he's like, "Hey, I'm living in Orlando. You should come to this church, right?" And at the time, I'm living three hours away from Orlando House of Prayer from Mohawk, and I'm like, "No, dude. Like, I know you gone. You know, like, I know you. I I, I kind of started judging him at the time because I was mm-hmm. like in and out, you know." And so I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna go check this out. I'm I'm gonna go see what this is. Let's go, babe. You know." So we drive down there, and we get there like at 2 in the morning, and OHOP, it's open, you know, and there was somebody worshiping, and as soon as I walked in, the presence of God hit me, and I hadn't felt it in so long that heavy, um, yes. because I didn't know the intercessions and prayers and fastings was going on in that very room, calling forth like the the the, the, child, the lost children who've lost their way, or evangelists and, and prophets, and, 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 you know, just calling forth the things that weren't here yet you know Mm -hmm. so uh, i get there and somebody tells me hey man um we have an internship program it's a five-month program where you consecrate yourself to god and and you're just reading the word you have 40 hours in this prayer room you get you get a sound doctrine teaching we go through the beatitudes and and they they were telling me all these things and i'm like and god reminded me of the prayer that i first told in the beginning my first prayer to god was lord i want to go to liberty university and i want to become a pastor god and i heard him and he said I've given you the the exact amount of finances that you need. At that time, I had the, exactly the amount that I needed to in my savings to go to the to the program, you know. And um, my wife looks at me. She's like, "If God's calling you, babe, you know what you have to do." So okay, so we drive three hours back to my house to go pick up my things. It was a Saturday. And we drive all the way back, and I start internship that Monday. I stay. <laughs> I stay in a. It was just like right wow. away. Right away. Got, it, it was like. N- not That's obedient. Yeah, right away. It was Jesus because like I love him, you know, and I want I want more of him and I knew that I needed to submit myself to him in order to get freedom, real freedom, you know? Mm-hmm. So the 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 first week of class it was the beatitudes and you know Jesus, he goes hard in the beatitudes. Oh, yeah. He 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 checks your heart, you know? Mm-hmm. Matthew 5 and 6. That's right. And um bam in in the in the in the in the w- middle of the week, it was a Wednesday. I'll never forget it. Um, they were they were going through the beatitudes and the toxins of your heart, you know. And then I heard God tell me, "Son, why are you angry at me?" It was clear. It was a way that I've never heard it before, you know. He said, "He says, son, why are you angry at me? And why are you holding this against me?" And the way I heard it, it was so clear that I just ah you know i just cried like i'm like father forgive me i know this wasn't because of you i know the enemy comes to still kill and destroy i know you have a purpose for me fill me with your spirit help me lord god you know it was a real real moment there with him and ever since that day um you know i i haven't i haven't what smoked in over a year and a half now almost two years now um i haven't touched heroin crack cocaine none of that stuff for years and and it's like the the main battle that I had was like going back to marijuana. And I know a lot of people deal with that, you know, and God can free you from that. If you truly want to be free, God will free you from it. If you really give him your heart, he will help you overcome that temptation. And um, in that, you know, in, in, in all of this, you know, going through this whole new transition, I'm like, OK, Lord, what's going to happen next? You know, I've done the five months. I'm like fired up. I he supernaturally. I don't know if you guys know about Azusa in California, mm-hmm. the the call where there was over seventy, eighty thousand people who came to pray and fast for the nation. He supernaturally provided wow. for for us to go. And I had zero dollars, and my wife had a uh, uh, she had a dream, and um, she had, God gave her a vision of ripples coming out of the state of California. And I'm like, okay, what? Well, maybe he wants us to go there. Let's pray. And <laughs> we supernaturally got. Um, over two thousand dollars in two days to to get a rental car to get money for a for a, a hotel room everything was provided and go to California and to go there and come back it was just like something that I will never forget man. God's will it's God's bill that's, that's right, right. Oh, hallelujah that's good man that's right I got that's a Facebook uh, post that one man <laughs> <laughs> for real. I've been saying that for years man but you know 
um, now, you know, I don't know. It was just like, uh, you know, we're going through that. And then God, God, um, God, the way he works, man, I, I was going to do a different, I was going to go into this house where, you know, they were just going to be evangelizing, going to from house to house and, 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 and doing, um, what the uh, apostles did in the book of Acts when they that's, would go from house to house, you know? That's how I got saved, actually. Wow. Yeah. So that was the idea. I was going to join a house like that. And I was really praying. I was like, Lord, is this where you want me to go, Father? Is this the next thing for me? And um, when I in that process of me praying, post happened the night the nightclub shooting. Remember yes. that? Yeah. Yep. So um, my friend who brought me to Christ was in that nightclub, and the day of that <laughs> of that uh, of that incident, the night before, my wife had a dream of us being in a club and we were getting shot at, and they were throwing um like bombs at us, like grenades, and we we're hiding behind this um uh this bar. And then we ran out the back door. Somehow we escaped out the back door. Well, that's literally how he escaped. He ran, he hid behind the bar, and then he got to escape through the back door. God spared his life. And they were throwing the the flash bombs to try and get his attention to distract him so they could get in and get. That's right. So it was just crazy. So that day, that, that week, it was like the Lord said, go. Just go and start praying for people, you know. Go to the hospital, lay your hands, and let's let's start praying for, like, the same day we went, you know, and we're like, Lord, guide us. And he guided us. And we went straight into the hospital and people were giving their lives to Jesus right there in the hospital. I mean, the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, people mm. couldn't speak in English, you know, and my, I'm Puerto Rican, but my Spanish isn't that great. But I'm trying to share the gospel as best as I can in Spanish, you know, and, and, and I will never forget this one man. His whole countenance changed like he like he accepted he accepted Christ. And it looked like this burden and this weight and his face was just like glowing right there in that instant, man. And his family was all around and they were all crying, you know. And and it was just, it was just so, God was moving so powerfully that day, you know, and that week. So we would go out there, we would lay hands, people were getting healed. Um, he, he supernaturally provided other people who went to do the same mission but they had guitars, you know, so I like to sing. So I was like, let's get the guitar out and let's walk the streets. You play the guitar and we'll sing and we're going to just just let Jesus manifest here, you know. And I remember we were there and there was a lot of people coming for prayer. And, and I remember this reporter. I mean, he was like 15 feet away. And we're, we're singing like, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. And um mm-hmm. and um. He, I looked at him, and this man was just crying, you know? He the was reporter. Just, the reporter. He wasn't even close to us. He didn't even want to come near to us, but he was crying, and it was like the Holy Spirit was just touching his heart through the music, you know? Mm-hmm. It was just so beautiful to see. And and so I get a call from my pastor, um, I want to say about a week and a half later, and he tells me, how would you like to do um, evangelism for OHOP, you know? be a director here and I, and I start thinking about my whole life you know like everything that <laughs> I've been through and all the prayers and all the things that I've done and and I'm like lord like is is this where you want me to go cuz I was trying to force peace on the other on the other uh place that I was going to go to cuz it was going to be in the house moved in with different uh all types of people with my wife and it was just like it wasn't I wasn't really really comfortable with that decision yet you know and then he he comes in and he gives me this you know and so ever since that, just been doing, you know, going out on the streets, um, sharing my testimony. Um, you know, we'll be doing an event uh, in June also where we're going to equip the the body as far as we're going to share our testimony. But we're going to speak about evangelizing because we're all called. We're all called to go mm-hmm. to to the to evangelize. We're all called for the Great Commission. Jesus needs to be uh, manifested and magnified on this earth and People need to know that there's real love. There's real love, and that love is God. You know, yes. and not not that false religion, that do, that 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 demonic Dogma. doctrine. You know, like traditional it's, stuff. That's right. God says in 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 the book of Jeremiah that in the last days He will raise up shepherds according to His heart, who will lead the people according to His heart. And that scripture speaks loud to me because it's like the emotions of God, the love of God, that's what brings people to him. That's what brings people to want to come to him. It's like his love, his understanding, his great patience, his mercy, you know, that's what transforms your heart and helps you become that new creation that he, that he wants us to be, you know? Yes. So, yeah, you know, and that's then, basically. 
my testimony. <laughs> That's it? I'm fired up, man. I want to go do something. <laughs> We're ready for Amen. more. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You and know? then when is the next one thing? Um, uh, Orlando. Orlando the, conference? Yes. Okay. So the next one thing, Orlando, will be on January 25th through the 27th. And that's going to be an amazing, an amazing experience for you guys. I hope you guys yes. can come out. Um, they will be putting out registration and stuff uh, here in a couple of months on the Orlando House of Prayer website. What is the website address? Do you know offhand? Yeah, it's orlandohop.org. Orlandohop.org. Yes. Check it out. Yes. But uh, if I could say anything to whoever's listening right now to encourage you, I would say that never give up. Don't lose hope. That God really wants to use you and God is raising up a generation of those who are after his heart. Yes. Those who don't want to compromise the gospel and he wants to use you to heal. He wants to use you to use you to raise the dead. He wants to use you to bring an encouraging message. He, he wants to use you to bring the kingdom of God on this earth because we are living in the end times and there, and there, it's time for the mature sons and daughters to, to, to manifest here on this earth. Yes. He said a mouthful there, brother. Oh, he did. Oh, mercy. <laughs> good great wow man i'm fired up and he's, on, and he's only 27 yes 27. yeah <laughs> amen wow yeah man what a testimony really i'm so glad you came in man you fired me up hey man I'm, you I'm brought blessed. some electricity into this place oh, man yes. Yes. we kind of needed the energy up in here come on I feel man like i've been fed that's what i'm talking about come on guys oh, and wow it's your, you said your wedding anniversary is in april my my father died in april oh. my parents got married in april and um his birthday was in april so wow. april was always the worst month for me wow you know every right. april i would my birthday is march 31st and then april 1st i would fall into this deep depression hmm. well then um i met my husband and his birthday's in april wow so Come i had on, something man. positive yeah. right? right then we had a daughter and her birthday's in April. Come on, God. So now every year <laughs> we're celebrating their birthdays, and it's uh-huh. and it's an exciting month for me. It's Amen. not like it used to be, but I can completely relate to what you were saying with yeah. your wedding anniversary being in April, and that's yes. when your mother passed away. You know, God, yeah. God will bring that to you, and I and I know that that's that that th- those two, my husband and my daughter, are from God. That's right, and that's why he kind of canceled out those yeah feelings and that anger. By bringing those two to me. Yeah. And I prayed for them for a long time. Yeah, my wife's middle name in Hawaiian is crazy because my mom's name is Rosemary, right? My, my, my wife's middle name in Hawaii is a heavenly flower sent from heaven. You oh, know? wow. Which is Rosemary. <laughs> you know, like wow. my mother. You know, and it's just like, Lord, like, you're amazing, God. You know, all the stuff that mm-hmm. we go through, all the stuff that, you, 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 that I went through, I praise you. Because I wouldn't be the man that I am today. I wouldn't be a man who wants to seek you and know that I need more of you every day. I need your spirit to lead me every single day. I need your grace so that way others can have hope, you know? And when they look at me on the streets, you know, like you guys can't see me here in the studio, but uh, I, I have tattoos on my neck, all over my arms, you know? Um, and long it's just, hair, long beard. hair, a beard, you know? <laughs> it's just like you wouldn't think. And when I, when I go up to people to pray, um, they're like, dude, are you a Muslim or something? <laughs> yeah. And they're I'm like, afraid you're going to cut them. Yeah, man. And I'm like, no, I love Jesus. Can I pray for you? You know, oh, kinda, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. This is amazing, man. God is good, man. God you says can, he uses the foolish to confound the wise. That's mm-hmm. right. And you can ask for signs from God too. I, I, I used to pray about my dad all the time. I would sing this song by mercy me. And, uh, I would say, God, you know, am I going to recognize my dad when I see him? Because it's been so long. It's right. been like 30, over 30 years. And uh, when I prayed about it, he said, my dad, my dad's spirit said to me, you'll recognize me from my eyes. Because my dad had these um, like husky blue eyes, mm. you know, like the really light, bright blue eyes. And so then I would say, well, gosh, you know, my heart's heavy because it's going to be so long before I see you again and before I see your eyes, you know. I wish that I could just look into your eyes again. And do you know when I had my daughter, she had those blue eyes. She was born with these bright blue eyes. God so gives you the desires of your heart. God said, 
you know, she is, she is from me. She's a gift to you. And my gift to you too, is that you're going to see your father's eyes again. You don't have to wait any longer. That's beautiful, man. That's amazing. It is. He cares about every detail. Yeah. Down to the finest detail of details. Um, uh, just once again, that's or, Orlando Hop dot org. com dot org dot, dot org. org. Yes, Orlando that's why I wanted to ask. Orlando Hop dot org. Yes, yes. Check it out. Twenty four seven. Yep. Prayers. They're open every day of the week. And there's a web stream. You can go to Orlando House of Prayer dot com for the web stream too. Do they still have the wall? Um, the prayer wall. Yes, they do. It's kind of like uh, as far as like Jerusalem, how they have their prayer wall. Yep, we have. That yes, there. that's so why I think that's why when you walk in there, you feel that fullness that yeah. uh the spirit in there because they have a prayer wall oh yeah and um i've put prayers in the prayer wall before yeah. that have come to it's fruition best. that have been Hallelujah. answered so it's been pretty amazing yeah we pray for everything i mean we pray for israel we pray for the president we pray for you know the loss we pray for the the gifts to be um you know manifested manifested i mean there's we we, we constantly are praying for every <laughs> detail every situation you know for because like we need it we need a a, 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 a intercessory a, a, a church that's intercessing like david you know david raised up a, a tabernacle they had a 24-hour uh, prayer and worship team there back then you know yeah so why not do it now you know yes. to usher in the second now coming. of all times <laughs> mm-hmm. well of all times we need it yeah. yes man fantastic wow Wow. Session 114. 114 session. <laughs> Jose, thanks again, brother. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming in, just sharing your heart. Uh, most of all, letting us get to know you and uh, telling us about uh, OHOP and IHOP and WeHOP. <laughs> Love it, man. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm I'm, thank, I'm thankful and blessed to be here, guys. Oh, thanks man. so much. So uh, OrlandoHOP.org. You can go there and uh, get the skinny, and then they can sign up for yep. the... There'll be forms there. Yeah, there'll yeah. be a reservation uh, right now. Not yet. In a couple, in a, about two more months, they'll have the the one thing conference yeah. registration. One thing conference. Registration, yes. And then, if anybody has a testimony, you can always send it in at GodStoriesRadio at gmail dot com. That's right, and they can also, Mikey. They Tw- can tweet us. They can tweet us. Nice <laughs> <laughs> at God Stories Radio, and please like us on Facebook. And then don't forget iHeart. If you follow us on iHeart, then you will never. Miss an episode of Mikey oh, again? Really? Nope. And <laughs> You'll iTunes. You'll be notified every time and, it comes uh, up. You, right. you can get the Mixler app. M I X L R. The Mixler app, and yeah, you Mixler. can follow us on Mixler, and you can listen to us live. Yeah, if you go to Thursday. Mixler.com and we have, uh, have some Radio. folks on there tonight. Uh, of course, we have Minus. the Raging Tech, Mr. AJ himself, yeah, in Mr. the studio. AJ's right here with us tonight, and we have three people listening. I can't tell who they are, but welcome. Thank you for listening tonight. You dialed into a good one. Yes. No doubt about it. Our uh, brother Jose is uh, speaking from the heart tonight, and he has, uh, he's blessed me, man. I'm fired up. I'm really fired up. So. You ain't lying. So, anyway. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for session 114. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. And I'm Trish. God bless. God bless. workers who tend a fig tree are allowed to eat the fruit, so workers who protect their employer's interests will be rewarded. As a face is reflected in water, so the heart reflects the real person. We got what you want. Gospel, Holy Ghost, world is giving fronts. Idols, horoscopes, we ain't here to stunt. Like some ski ramps and motorboats, the only thing we serving here is Jesus. Come get a dose. Life giving antidote, you don't need nothing else. You can chase money, power, respect, yeah, but nothing helps. Worldviews is something else, but I'm telling you something's felt. When you dive in this living water, Michael Phelps. Errors in your life, control, alt, delete. Then Christ comes through, install life, peace. Trying to clean your act up, I know it's not easy But when it comes to sin, Christ, Washington's D.C. So don't ignore the truth with the lies that's produced Cause your thoughts get seduced, that deadly poison brown the cruise Satan known child abuse, so, so your faith is reduced But when it comes to Christ, now you getting rooted, bearing fruit Psalms chapter 40, verse 2, and Proverbs 28, verse 1 I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard me cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, 
and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust. Holy Ghost. Lately we've been stressing, but we need to count our blessings Should, Shouldn't be free, should be serving out my sentence I used to want my money to stretch longer than intestines Now I put the kingdom first, and I'm learning what content is Jesus was the entrance, sort of like my dentist Hate was my cavity, and sin was my infection Driving for the pennant, home runs up in heaven Blessed and highly favored, and my favorite number seven Abraham's descendant, living with repentance Army of the Lord and he made me a lieutenant Fighting for survival Hand up on my Bible To you it's just a book But I use it like a rifle Scripture after scripture The living word will fix you Open up your eyes And show you the bigger picture I told you the word of God Is like 7 Mac 11 838 Until the pearly gates Ezekiel chapter 33 Verse 12 through 13 Son of man Give your people this message the righteous behavior of righteous people will not save them if they turn to sin, nor will the wicked behavior of wicked people destroy them if they repent and turn from their sins. When I tell righteous people that they will live, but then they sin, expecting their past righteousness to save them, then none of their righteous acts will be remembered. Levantado y humillado, disciplinado y consolado, con la vara del criado me pastorearán por su vallado. El, el omnipotente tendido su mano, no ignoren esta trompeta que estamos tocando. El atalaya se paraba en una torre alta y velaba que el enemigo no se le acercara. Y cuando venía de camino, él se levantaba y el sonido de una trompeta tocaba. El pueblo avanzaba y se preparaba, pero qué tal si el atalaya se duerme en su velada y el enemigo que venía los destrozara, porque no hubo nadie que les avisara. No permitas que el enemigo se acerque a tu casa, pueblo avanza, prepararte, que el tiempo se acaba. Que, que el tiempo se acaba, que, que, que el tiempo se acaba. Pueblo avanza, prepararte, que el tiempo se acaba. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 10 and 11. Son of man, give the people of Israel this message. You are saying, our sins are heavy upon us. We are wasting away. How can we survive? As surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to turn from their wicked ways so they can live. Turn, turn from your wickedness, O people of Israel. Why should you die? I stand up to my demons, oh, yeah. hip trick or squeeze them. Okay. Father Christ besides me, battling the legion, back to see this. So I reap oh, yeah. a voluntary recruit. No religion, but you see me eating sleep with Jesus. What? I ain't come alone, I save the seek for Jesus. I love it when demons start okay. to screech when we preach. Okay. Green ends with a beating in the name of Jesus. Don't get me started like a bishop. Hit me hack up in between my breeze. Grant me this serenity to gain control. How I gain drugs, money and Whores. Now I won't no more Promise me these ain't my footsteps That they yours Why you carry me if so Then I go with the flow Cause I'm ready that phone spill your pack Cause you ain't never seen a demon really run This that wisdom love your soul These some new kicks lead a four four Think you tuck to your shoe Keep the front door heavy here With like man sharing feast the tabernacle We'll prep the soul Strap the boost for the head on battle I hope you pass the you can Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So I come boldly before the throne of mercy and grace And I'm asking the Father to change all my wicked ways Cause all this heart desires is to see your glorious face Fill, fill, fill me with your spirit to persevere in this race I used to think that money, sex and drugs would free me Until I met the sun and now my eyes can really see Who the sun sets free is free indeed Jesus, 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 yeah he's calling me yeah, he's calling me Jesus, 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 Jesus Yeah, he's calling me I said he's calling me Jesus, 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 Jesus Yeah, he's calling me John 8, 31 through 32 So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him If you continue 
continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Jesus, 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 yeah, he's calling me.